Hello everyone, Lee does it, but it's back with another how to play. Today we're looking at how to play Quantum, the card game, which is by Synapsis Games and greater than, what was it? Sorry, greater than games, right. At least in this version. And it is a follow-up to a Quantum board game. It's been out for a number of years. Artwork by Pascali Brassard and they say Pascali, Pascal, Brassard, and Etienne Dubois Wah. Or at least the design is oh, it's actually by Silly Jelly. <laughs> Interesting name. As you can see, it's very bright and colorful, very really nice box. It is for one to four players, so you can play solo. And uh, it's ages 10 and up. It takes about 25 minutes to play. Beautiful artwork. And the components are decent quality with infinite cards. And you get a bunch of stuff. You also get these pieces here. These are the round, the, these are the markers for the rounds as you play. These golden body segments. Now, unfortunately, they're not solid. Maybe if they'd been wood, they're just plastic. And uh, you're going to be playing four rounds. You're going to use these to mark the rounds by connecting them. You'll see. And then the last round is going to be a head and a tail. These two are extra. They are used for solo mode, so we'll put them aside. You also get 50 of these feather cards, which have different feathers that you're going to be using to create the body for this Kowato. Basically, what you're doing in this game is there's this Aztec temple that's been erected, and you're going to be competing to, be, to paint the best Kowato to decorate this temple. And that's how you're going to win the game. You're going to do that. You're going to try to score the most points. Um, and this is going to tell you, you know, which round you're on. Put that aside for the moment. You have these temple cards. There is six of them. When you start the game, you'll shuffle them up. And you're going to choose one. And this is going to be like an end game uh, scoring. And I'll go over these. And if you complete... One objective, one of two objectives, there's two objectives. If you complete one of them, you'll get three points. If you complete both, you get seven. In this case, the one objective is to complete, from these cards, your prophecy cards, one of each of these. So there's this pink one, there's this, there's different colors here. There's about four or five. And... There they are, I believe that's all of them. And in this case, if you complete these three colors, you get the three points. And this is when you're building your Kowato using these cards. If it has 12 or less cards or segments, uh, you will score points for that. I'll just leave that in a bit. This one, uh, maybe I could do this at the end of the game. <laughs> But whatever this one is, you have to have less of these than you do of these that you have fulfilled. And this means you have to have uh, as many red as you do green colors for these same. So you have to have the same amount of those two colors. Uh, this one is, you must have more of these than these, the green ones. And this means... Uh, you must have a equal amount of uh, all the colors, I believe it is. I have to verify that, actually. <laughs> okay, never mind. You have to have three consecutive segments that are all the same colors. So, something like... Something like... Oh, crap. Something like uh, this. If you have three segments... In your coattle that are all the same color, you get those points. And I dropped the coins for two. I apologize. That's that one. And then this one is you have to have. I have to verify that one as well. <laughs> two prophecies of the same color. So you have to have at least two prophecies of the same color that are the same level, which will be indicated on these level cards. And, um, and this means you have to have 
less than six of the same color. It has to have at least six of the same color. And in this one, again, it means you have to have the same amount of blue and yellow, and you have to have all three of these. And this one, you have to have at least 16 cards in here, and you have to have these three colors. And we'll go over that in a bit. So you'll shuffle these up, and you're gonna use one for the game. So let's say we choose this one. Uh-huh. And we'll put that aside, and then these ones can go back into the box. So you got that. Each player is going to be dealt out some of these cards here for each for the setup. And uh, we could do, you know, we could pretend we're doing a free player game. It's probably better with more players than less, perhaps. And I'll show you those prophecy cards in a bit and put the rest of the cards to form a draw pile. Each player is going to get one of these cards. I'll just do like that. Uh, this is a level card, and each player is going to get a prophecy card. Delta the prophecy cards uh, tell you what you have to do to complete this. In this case, you would have to have a yellow or gold with a blue in the middle, and you'll start with it on the zero side. This one, this example, is you have to have a blue and a black. And this one, you have to have a red. And you have to have a stack next to it, but it cannot be a red on top. So an example of that, using this cards here, is they have to have this red here, for example. And then they have to have a stack like that. So what you can do to game when you're playing this is you can... I'll start with these ones. Is you'll be playing these one way or the other, and then eventually you'll add more. You can add to one side or the other. You can rotate them. You can also overlap them on one like that, but you can never slide one underneath. You cannot do that. In this case, I'd only be able to play this one here or on top of here. I'm not even sure if you can cover a card completely, but you place one there and then maybe do that. You'll go through the game doing that. So each player is gonna start off with more cards, uh, on top of that, we're going to have, we'll have this over here, we'll have two prophecy cards revealed next to this. And I'll put the rest of the deck there to start off. Let me see if I can focus on this. So you're going to have your temple card with your main end objective uh, for the game. And some additional uh, prophecy cards on top of the one you have. Now, whenever you fulfill a prophecy card, you're going to move it for how many times you fulfill it. So if I fulfill this one once, meaning I complete this once and put it here, and it's going to be worth two points. If I get it twice, I can move it over to the five side. And then if I do it three times, it's going to be worth six points, and I will lock that in. Why is that important? Because if I have this one here... And somebody else fulfills this, they can steal it from me. But once you've done it three times, you get to lock it in and it cannot be stolen. Each player is also going to get a set of these cards. Starting with uh, the start player game number one. And there's four sets. And what are these? These are heads and tails. You got five heads in each of the five colors and five tails. So, we'll put these here for the moment. And the start player will get these. And before the start player makes any plays, he will put one of these here to indicate this is the first round. And then he's going to play. When you start, you're going to start with just one card to start off your qualm because you don't have anything. I'm going to move these up here. And then you're going to draw back up to four. And then everyone else is going to go. It comes back to me. I'm going to play two cards now, and I can play to either side of this collateral. Remember, I'm trying to fulfill this. So maybe I'm going to do this. And that hasn't fulfilled anything yet. That I can 
town. Let me see what my bones. You can also fulfill these ones that are over here if possible. I haven't fulfilled any of those yet. Or, you know, I can steal from somebody else. So, if, uh, yeah, everyone's going to go. It comes back to me. Oh, I forgot. I have to do one more card here, actually. It's two cards. You're going to be playing. And I'm going to play this. I need a blue in the middle of a green. Actually, I did fulfill this one because I have a blue in the middle of a, a green and a gold. So this would move to the number two side. My apologies. And and then maybe I would. I could play this here, which would let me steal this one because it's both the blue and the black. And I would put that here, fulfilled it once. Later on, maybe I fulfill it again. And every time you're gonna play two cards, you're gonna draw back up to four. So every round you're gonna play two cards and then draw back up to four. Every time you fulfill one of these objectives, for instance, let's say I play this here, this allows me to fulfill, no, it doesn't, my apologies. <laughs> um, I need to have a blue in the middle. Oh, I, I can't see that one right there. But let's just say I did this. Played that one here. I fulfilled this one again. Now I would move it and put it face down on the sixth side. All right. Hopefully that makes sense. Then you're going to keep going around the table. Each round, when I play a card, I'm going to add a segment to the body. And once we get to the fourth round... Then I'm going to add the head and the tail. And at that time, you're going to discard whatever favorite cards you have in your hand. And one other thing I forgot to mention you can do on your turn is if you don't necessarily want to play these cards, you can discard one and draw one blindly from the deck. And then that's your turn. Otherwise, you're playing two cards on either end. And... And then drawing back up. Before I already have too many cards. Um, again, you can overlap like this, like I did there or there. But you can never go underneath. And for there was one prophecy here. This one is I have to play a red card next to a stack. So let's just say I had this one in my hand. If I play this here and I stack it up, that's what a stack is. You play one on top of the other. Then I can play this here. And now I've fulfilled that obligation. I could steal that card. And I fulfilled it once. Do I have any more black blue? I already fulfilled that twice, actually. So I put that here. You're going to keep track of all that. You can steal from other players. I, I, if you steal from them, they're going to get a new prophecy. And of course, they can steal from you. If you take one of these, you'll refill that as well. And then once you get to the point where you do the head and the body, the fifth and final round, you're going to take these cards, the head and the body, and you're going to play one on one end and one on the other, potentially trying to fulfill one last objective here. Red, or blue and black, I fulfilled one objective. So I could do that. And then you're going to score based on what you got here. So in this case, I have 12 points for these two, and I got two points for this one, so that's 14. And did I meet any of these end goal objectives? Um, I did not get 16 or more cards in my quarter. And uh, in terms of this, I did not meet that except with either. So I wouldn't get any of these points, theoretically. But if I had completed, uh, do we have a yellow one here? If I had completed, say, this one, then I would meet that objective of having the yellow, the green, and the pink, and I would get three points. If I had had enough cards here, I would have gotten this. But I don't have enough. Uh, but yeah, that is the game in a nutshell. Good quality components. Linen finished cards, like I mentioned, this is, it's, it's nice. It's getting away from me. 
<laughs> um, it's alive. <laughs> uh, it's fine for what it is. I have no complaints. It, maybe it's not the most... Uh, it could be a, a good game, an exciting game, I'm sure. I haven't had too much experience with it, obviously, but I figured I would cover it, look at it. It's pretty cool. Nice artwork. I like inside of the box as well. And it's available from different card shops. I don't know if it's on Amazon yet or anything like that. But yeah, Quantum Card Game. There is also, as I mentioned, an expansion that lets you play with um, the Quantum board game using these pieces. But I don't have that game. I don't plan on getting it, so it doesn't give me much of a point. But yeah, that's what you get. You get these level cards, you get the feather cards, you get the those cards, <laughs> the prophecy cards, the temple cards, and the head and tail cards. That is that. It's pretty cool for what it is. It, it can be stealing and everything. Now, I should mention as well, when you're stealing, you can only steal from one player once during a round. You can't steal. You can't just keep stealing cards from them. And you can steal cards. If this person had this here on the two and had this one to five. And I fulfilled this one, the blue and the green. I could steal that. We have that's it, so not even beer. But if I had this one here, even if it was on the five, I could steal it. I can only not steal it if it's face down on the six, it is blocked as indicated on this card. So I wanted to clarify that you can only steal one at a time from one person. Again, if they had multiple on here. You can't steal more than one, you can steal one. And if it's locked, you can't touch it, obviously. And then at the end of the game, you do your scoring. Whoever has the most points wins. It's pretty straightforward, I would say. Uh, comment, like, subscribe, and what you think. We'll see you next time for more. Thanks for watching. See ya.